Hey YouTube, 3D Printed Life here with just a quick update on my Eclipse 3D2. So since the last update, uh, I haven't changed much, but I have changed a few critical components. First of all, you'll notice that the hue and rails and uh, linear guides are on now, on all axes. Um, and the motion is super smooth, I mean, kind of hard to tell with the belts on. But when the belts were off and I was just moving it by hand, super smooth, much more rigid, um, so just good stuff overall. Also, you'll notice this new piece on top of the hot end. Basically, this is what is acting to clamp down the hot end a lot more securely. Before, you may remember I had some Kapton tape in there, but now this guy just clamps down, and this guy is, again, super rigid. Um, so, there was like a small error in my design, so I had to add some washers there. Um, but regardless, it clamps it very well, uh, nice and snug, so good stuff there. Also, on the back, we have the new belt clamping plate, which means that proper belt clamps are on both sides now instead of just one. So, more good stuff. And I have replaced the Y gantry piece. And the reason for that is because now I have this guy bolted in correctly to an M3 hole. This one is not. I had to do my same little modified fix. Um, I'll explain that in uh, another video I have, or I might have already released, about the machined parts. Um, but then I also have the correct position for the end stop trigger, which means the X axis now triggers as it's supposed to right at the end of travel. Um, whereas on the old version, I drilled it by hand and it was too far out, but it is correct now. Other than that stuff, I have um, a new power shroud on, except it's still not the final one. Um, I don't know where the final one went, but actually I think I tossed it because it had um, a little bit of an error on it. Um, but basically, I have it modified so that it will hold this wire assembly for the z-axis uh, right along there um, to avoid it getting pinched underneath the z-axis linear bearings. Uh, I don't remember if I had this last time, but the z-axis does work. I've got the bolt to trigger and then it just goes into that hole to trigger. It is not adjustable unfortunately. I couldn't find a long enough bolt uh, with threads all the way along it in order to allow for it to be adjustable. However, in the LCD here you can go down to, to uh, configure and you can adjust this Z home offset. Um, so basically you can just use that to more precisely modify the offset um, and then you just have to save that through another custom setting which will save it to the um, to the EEPROM. So what's left to do on my printer? Um, very little. At this point basically it is just finalizing the printed parts. So um, I have to get a new printed bag for this guy because I still don't have that bolted on. Um, but I think that design's finalized, I just have to do it. I have a new Z-axis bracket, which is going to go down there. I have the new power shroud, like I mentioned. Um, I'm going to have to reprint this stuff in black so it looks a little bit better. Um, I just printed it in red at the time being because that's all I had. Um, I do have to modify the bracket a little bit because, as you can see, that brace kind of gets in the way of that bottom hole. Um, so yeah, that's going to have to change a little bit. But, I mean, at this point, it's mostly very minor things. It, it's only a few hours of work left, and then the Eclipse 3D2 will be essentially done. Um, at that point, it's just finalizing the bomb, and then getting the beta kits out, and the pre-orders open, and all that stuff. Um, and then releasing the files to the public. So, uh, progress is coming along good. I've been doing a few test prints, and actually, I ended up printing sideways for a little bit. I'll insert that clip now. Um, and by sideways, I mean the printer was on its side. Um, basically, I just had to get underneath to uh, measure some stuff while it was printing, so I figured why not just flip it while it's printing and see what happens, and it came out pretty well. Um, this print I did was at 60 microns, so it came out pretty nicely. Let's just get in the light here. Um, it kind of pointless to go this high resolution with prints, um, but I mean, as you can see, lots of detail. There's like a little bit of a kind of bumpy outer surface finish, which may just be because of the... Um, limitation in steps per millimeter of the extruder or something. I'm not sure, um, but I do have the Titan which is geared down 3 to 1, so I'll look into that a bit, although I, I don't really like that high resolution printing. It's pretty much pointless. This print I did was the beginning of a huge part of this. So basically I took this and I scaled it to the max, and so basically that will max out the height at 255 millimeters. So going from that guy to that. As you can see, it would have been huge, and I stopped it because this was taking too long. 
um, because those layers didn't come out nice because I was doing too high of a layer height and because the info was way too dense. Um, and I did this uh, 3D honeycomb just to try it out uh, and it was printing pretty slow. So I will be redoing this print um, at lower layer height, probably 0.2 millimeters, and I will be doing lower infill and just uh, rectilinear infill. And um, it's going to be a huge print, so it should look really cool. I'll definitely do it in white because I like the finish of the white. It's like a matte white. So there are some steep overhangs under here, so they didn't come out amazingly, but I mean, it's pretty much a 90 degree overhang. So um, the rest of it should come out nicely because the rest is pretty much all constraining to that 45 degree rule. So that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I will do another update as uh, progress goes on. But really not too much left to do now, so uh, it's more of just uh, printing out stuff, trying it out, and then see what happens and going from there. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll catch you later.